previously on Calamity 300 times spawn rates. After killing Plantera, I'm now getting closer and closer to the Moon Lord. That doesn't mean there isn't more to do however, as there's plenty more to do. One of these is to upgrade my weapons. I try to get the Blossom Flux from the Plantera treasure bags. The game has other plans however, but I do get a grenade launcher, which will help me handle crowds for a while until I get a better weapon. Another important thing I need is shrew my armor, sold by the truffle. I make a house for him using a floating island which in retrospect probably wasn't the best idea, as I die quite often getting to and from the island. When he arrives, I buy the auto hammer and I make shrew my armor. Along with the armor, I make the hoverboard. I made another upgrade. I make the hydra, which is one of the first unique guns of the playthrough. It'll shoot like a shotgun, but also grow heads out that shoot, you know, two to four times the amount of bullets. I can also make them detach, causing for a huge explosion and massive damage. Now it's accessory upgrading time. I combine my ornate shield and the ink shield, creating the Asgard's Valor. Is what I would say if I didn't have to fight the Calamitous clone for Ashes of Calamity. This fight was incredibly light due to the Hydra. It's honestly insane damage carried this fight. Once they get down to 70%, they start a bullet hell segment, which I dodge perfectly. She then starts shooting more bullets at me and dashing at me. She does this for quite a while, but at 36%, she creates her own version of the twins. They are pretty much exact copies, however, so I take them down with ease leaving just me and the Calamitous clone to duke it out. Only seconds after this, however, she spawns a shield of Soul Seekers. I pop my adrenaline and take them out one by one, eventually leaving just the Calamitous clone. When she's only hits away from death, she starts another bullet hell segment as a last resort. But I flawlessly dodge every bullet again, and they charge at me one final time. After securing the dub, I make the Asgard's Valor, a shield that combines my Ank Shield and Ornate Shield. I also make and equip the Deadshot Brooch, increasing projectile velocity and damage. After I go broke reforging, I decide to fight Leviathan and Anahita. I start the fight, but I believe it was bugged. It skips right to the second phase where the Leviathan is summoned, and it never goes into the third phase. So I basically have to fight both at once. So I have to pick one to kill. I try to defeat Anahita first, but the game bugs and the fight just ends, leaving me with no treasure bag. With this knowledge, I know I have to try to kill the Leviathan first. So I attempt the fight again. Like I said earlier, I attempt this fight a little differently. This time, I focus on the Leviathan instead of Anahita. The Leviathan will dash at you and shoot giant meatballs at you. All of his attacks are very predictable, but they also are very large and hit like a truck. Anahita, on the other hand, will dash at you, summon projectiles around you, and her projectiles are a lot smaller and will close in on you, but they still hit like a truck. Since these projectiles will close in on you, you have to be at the perfect angle to go around the circle of bullets. Once the two of them get lower, they will do the same attacks, but they get a lot faster. I try and target the Leviathan, and I finish him off, leaving just Anahita. She is now very enraged. She now fires a lot more bullets, with a mix of bubbles and music notes thrown in there. These attacks are fairly predictable, they just require good positioning to dodge. After dodging for a while, I win the fight. Once I win, I open my treasure bag and I see the weapon that'll carry me for a little while, the Leviathan. With my new weapon, I wanted to try to fight Astrum Aureus, only to be quickly humbled. 
twice. I decide to fight Golem instead. I do a little cleaning up in the temple, and I summon Golem. I then immediately realize the room is pitch black and I cannot see a thing, causing me to die. I come back and I light up the room, and clear out some spikes I missed. I summon Golem. I prep some more, buying buffs and making a blood orange, which puts my health to a whopping 525. I'm now ready for the fight. Golem's attacks are not hard to dodge. He is just very tanky with 200,000 health. At the start of the fight, he'll shoot some balls that bounce around the arena. He'll also shoot his fists out at you and occasionally shoot a laser from his head. When he gets a little lower on life, he'll start to bounce around. Once I break his arms and his head levitates above me, it's just his freaky head and limbless body. I target the head first, but it doesn't like this and it starts to retaliate by moving to four corners and shooting lasers at me. Once I kill the head, it's just the body, and it's jumping for joy. It'll bounce up to my platform and slam down making bullets spawn from the platform. He'll also just spam lasers in the balls that bounce around the arena. After a long time of him just bouncing, I win the fight. After winning the fight against Golem, the jungle becomes infected by a plague. And I need the materials from the infected enemies to make new weapons and new armor sets. I farm the enemies. And I make the armor. But to make the bow I want, I had to fight the plague bringer Goliath. Before that though, I accidentally start a Martian invasion and die a lot. And more importantly, I farm the queen bee for a honeycomb to make a new accessory, the alchemist flask. This accessory will inflict the plague and reduce damage taken from the plague. After several queen bees, I get the honeycomb and I make the Alchemist Flask. I forgot to mention it earlier, but the Plague Armor set has a really cool set bonus. Basically, it'll blind you, but you deal double damage. I'll be using this a lot, as it's very OP when stacked with Adrenaline and Rage. I also make a Recon Scope, but I hate it and never used it again. Now that I'm a little more geared up, I make the Plaguebringer Goliath Summon and start the fight. This is a very hard fight. My main weapon is the uh, Blossom Flux with Venom Arrows as it shoots very fast and does very good damage. Especially when I use Rage and the Blindness Bonus that my armor gives me. My strategy is to use the Blindness Bonus, Rage, and Adrenaline all at the same time for a massive damage boost. He starts out by dashing at you, like the Queen Bee, and shooting homing missiles at you. This fight is basically just an enhanced Queen Bee fight. After a little more of the same, he gets to around 40%, in which he arms himself with a nuke. He gets way faster, and dashes a lot more, and also will shoot more rockets. He also gains a new attack. During this attack, he'll go from left to right, and shoot a wall of projectiles you have to dodge. All these projectiles, along with the other attacks, makes this fight insanely hard. I get pretty low during the fight. With both of us on the verge of death, I just barely beat him with 66 health remaining. I open my treasure bag and I can now make nothing. I open a lot more treasure bags until I get the malevolence, which will shoot plague arrows that explode into bees. And now I thought it was time to fight, you know, the queen herself. The one boss you've been waiting for. You know her, and you love her. See Empress Light. I find the butterfly, and start the fight. Spoiler alert, I ended up starting the fight a lot. I had a lot of trouble with this boss. The bow did good damage, but I missed a lot of my shots. So, I set it on using a weaker gun that hits more shots. After losing some more, I found a solution to my weapon problem. The Frost Moon. 
More specifically, the chain gun. I farmed the frost moon, and let's just say things got a little out of control. After a long night of me dying over and over, the frost moon ends, and I have a brand spanking new chain gun. I attempt the fight a couple more times until I get this attempt. This fight was insanely tough. When the fight starts, she will shoot homing stars, make an area around her, dash at you, which also spawns more homing stars, and make shooting stars that circle around the arena. She can also shoot lasers at you. This fight was made a little easier as my blindness buff didn't make me totally blind because all the projectiles are, you know, rainbow. But that being said, all the attacks are very hard to dodge. She gets to phase 2 at around 60% and this is where the difficulty really ramps up. She can shoot swords at you in patterns, shoot more lasers, homing stars, and her dashes are way quicker. After dodging hundreds of attacks, I win the fight. After winning, I open the bag like every other boss fight and I don't get what I need. So I'm forced to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars just on treasure bags. Before I do that, I decide that while I still have my buffs, I want to try to fight her again. And I win first try. I still don't get what I want though, the Empress Wings. So I reach for my wallet and buy more treasure bags until I finally get the Empress Wings. Now I only have one more boss I want to take out today. Duke Fishron. After obtaining a truffle worm, I summon him on the beach. After getting right to the end of the fight, I know I can win. It'll just take a couple more attempts. And that's exactly what happened. <sighs> this fight is hard, but not anywhere near as hard as Empress of Light. He starts out by chasing you, spawning bubbles, and shooting sharks at you. These are all fairly easy to dodge. The fight actually gets tough at phase 2 which is when he gets faster, shoots more sharks, bubbles, and spawns tornadoes in the arena. The tornadoes are definitely the hardest part to dodge though, as it essentially acts as a roadblock. After getting him pretty low, he enters phase 3. This phase really doesn't make the fight a lot harder, he'll just now randomly teleport on you, but this can be easily dodged by just dashing through him. This pathetic last phase means I end up taking the dub over Duke Fishron. This is where I'm deciding to end it for today. Be sure to like and subscribe and join the Discord so you don't miss the next episode because I may or may not be defeating the Moon Lord next episode.